Jr. here with Lifestyle Cycles, and we're about to interview Jeff Holt, V-Twin Visionary. It's going to be an amazing interview. You're not going to want to miss it. Today I'm talking to Jeff Holt, great friend of mine. We've known each other, what, how, 25? Yeah, 25 years at least. At, at least 25 years. Yes, we are that old. We, we, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it's, we're showing our age. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? But we have, we have both grown up in this industry. Mm -hmm. And I think you've started out, you know, you've been into motorcycles your whole life. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, I came from BMX, skateboarding like most kids, and then mountain biking, and then when I could afford, or... Uh, or pretty much, you know, get a hold of any sort of motorized vehicle. I made it happen. Yeah. Now, were you, were you riding mini bikes like me? When I was a little kid, mini bikes were my world. I, I, I had, it was a taco. It was called the Taco oh, 22. Yeah. Man, and kids would come all over the neighborhood race me. Yeah. And that, that, I was badass. I mean, for me, I, I, didn't, I didn't come at motorcycles this way. My father was involved in a motorcycle accident. He's paraplegic from it. So oh, man. as a child, that. I was never allowed to ride any motorcycles and i mean long story short if you if you defy me to do something i'll You're make gonna, it my yeah, life's that's, work that's the way it works you know <laughs> no you can't okay well, i'm gonna yeah, I'll go just do make it. it my whole life that that is that is awesome <laughs> but i mean he's good with it now and i you know i've, I've made a great living out of it and you meant a thousand thousands upon thousands of great people you know yeah. so i think that that that's for me is just it is the, the people in this industry are the best that's it, that's what keeps me around. Yeah. I mean, I, I could have gotten out and, and gone my own way for, for years, but it's the people, and, and it's internationally. It's yeah. not just, you know, I, we travel, and I recognize, they're wearing Lifestyle Cycle shirts. You know how cool that is? Isn't that awesome? When, 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 you, when you go into a, a resort in Mexico or something, and the guy sitting at the bar has the Lifestyle Cycles, uh, it's, it's just, it, it, it's... It just makes you feel great. It makes you feel great. Yeah, man. It makes you feel you like know? you did something. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and or, or even a <laughs> Well, at least you shirt. bought a T-shirt. Well, the, uh, that's, yes, you know. <laughs> no, and, just kidding. <laughs> and then, then we get to go, you know, it, it's an instant conversation. Yeah. You know, and I can't tell you how many people I've been somewhere, and just because they're wearing a Harley shirt. Oh, yeah. You know, the next thing you know, we've, we've, we've exchanged phone numbers and, and become friends. Yeah. It's just it's, crazy how it works. You know, the industry's... Yes, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, but you know, at this level where we are with custom and performance stuff, it's, it's a very small knit community. It, it's, it is, it's, it's, it's very small. Yeah. And you wind up f realizing that once you meet somebody, they know somebody that you're good friends with. Yep. And, and it keeps going. Now, now let's, let's go back in the time machine. Uh, you, you actually were, we met before you were with Hot Bike Magazine. Yes, yeah, I was always, you know, so, come, just cause I grew up in Anaheim, you know, by being a local kid, you know, I, I knew who you were. You were already legendary at that time for, you know, working on bikes, building really cool stuff. You know, custom scene was blowing up th during that oh, time. Oh, that was amazing you know? then, yeah. And, I mean, it was, it was really cool. You know, I, I met, you, met you through friends, you know, like we all do, you know. And I just thought, man, this guy is really doing it. He's going places, you know. And then, you know, come, you know, geez, I don't know, six years later, I'm in the industry and, you know. And, we, we work together you know, a lot. How many articles do you, how many bike build <laughs> articles or install article, how many do you think we actually did? I think, you know, myself and, and, and Lifestyles, we did a lot. But I mean, as far as the brand, Hot Bike, Baggers and Street Chopper, when we were, when we were running all those magazines, it, it was, it's got to be 500 or more. Yeah. We I were, mean, we used you guys so many times, you know, you guys were always really good to us. You guys, you know, the, the, the text you guys had, whether it wasn't you, but your other, your right hand man, you know, so to speak, they were always good, super good to us, patient. If, you know, cause half of these things never worked out. So we always <laughs> occupied at least one of your lifts. It was always this thing. There bolt was one. On. Yeah. yeah. This bolt on cool accessory was farthest thing ever six weeks on your yeah. lift <laughs> yes nothing was ever oh. and what happened was we would always wind up being the manufacturers r and d yeah. to to figure out what what unpaid is this thing? yes yeah no your junior's a sucker it's give both them of this us, they'll man. figure you it know, out everybody's like yeah. oh, here's this These it's guys. not the real pro it's not the final yeah. production but it'll work and i'm like yeah. no, i have to doesn't. round out every hole yeah no it doesn't <laughs> not, not, not even close not it's even, still oh, that like, way it, yeah, oh, it, you know, you're right. 
<laughs> and we still do it. We will, yeah. you know, but that's what's part. That's why they come to us. I agree. That is why they come to us because we've been there. We've done that. Uh, we've already got that T-shirt and we're going to keep doing it. Right. And, and I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of, uh, you know, not to knock anybody online, but there's a lot of dudes on YouTube and all over the Internet, you know, claiming that, you know, they're they're experts at stuff. And when they're not. Well, you know, you know on, it's kind of hard. After three you know. months in the industry, I, I think that qualifies them <laughs> to, to be an, an expert. Yeah. You know, and I mean, you know, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not patting you or, or myself on the back, but I mean, right. we've we've seen tens of thousands of new products come and go. And and we've installed most of them. Yes. And, you know, after after a while, we, we figure out what, what really does work, yeah. what companies stand behind their products. Um, how to work within their organizations, yes. and and which ones have the same people? Because it's important to me, the companies I deal with, that when I call them, I get the same person I've been talking to for ten years. Agreed. And I know they're going to solve my problems. Yeah, and I mean, you know, as, as far as you know, where where I come from on this stuff, you know, a lot of haters on the internet says, oh, he just gets free shit, blah blah blah. But you wouldn't realize how many of these free parts are more work than just paying retail for something else. <laughs> Especially all these oh, free man. bikes that I get uh, that I spend twenty thousand dollars of my own building. personal money on building, you know, oh. it, it's just funny, you know, the way that that works. But yeah. this industry is parts driven, and yeah. if there's not people <laughs> out there knowing <laughs> well, about the parts and how to properly install them and where they come from and who who makes them, you know, then yeah. then why are we doing all this? Well, we I think we've learned free is most always the most expensive. <laughs> Thing you you get said it, bike. Junior. You and, said it. Uh, you, you know, it's. Uh, and I think it, most influencers <laughs> are finding that out now. Oh yeah. You know, in real time. Yeah. So I mean, you know, you know, we learned this, you know, decades ago, and now they're they're hip to it now. Yeah. Well, and, and now you have a you have a, a huge following. People, uh, you are famous in this industry. You you are the, uh, the go-to guy. Everybody knows you. Everybody respects you. Um, everybody, everybody listens to you um, because they know that if you you won't put out a, a testimony um, that that isn't true. Yeah, and I mean, there's there's also certain times a lot of people don't know. I get stuff that's so bad, I don't even let it see the light of day. Like I'll yep. send it back to the manufacturer and be like, man, you don't you don't you know you shouldn't even be making this product. Just yeah. just take it back. When you come out with a new one, we'll talk later. Or if you just go away, that's fine too. But I mean, like, that's kind of the 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 behind the scenes things for me. You know, I don't like it. I don't involve a lot of negativity into my brands. I don't. I don't. You know, I believe in a PMA concept. Cool. And you know, for me, the bottom line being is is really junior. Like, there's enough negative things in the world. Motorcycling is inherently dangerous. It's riddled with deaths every week. We go to funerals all the time. I want to be a ray of sunshine in this, man. You know, I want to show people what's rad, what's fun, that this lifestyle is awesome, that good stuff. I don't need to be, oh, there's this many deaths and this much and this part sucks well, and that guy sucks. Like, there's enough people doing that already. That ain't my job. Everybody gets into this because of their love of motorcycles, their love of being outside, their love of the mountains and yeah. deserts and people. Yeah. And you have to be positive because this is truly something they want to do. No, nobody has to do this. No. no. Nobody gets up in the morning and says, I have to ride my Harley Davidson to work. I am so pissed off. Right. Gun to head. Uh, yeah. It, it, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> and the accessories and the items, whenever we, we take something that, that, that we're going to sell, we test it first. Everything's been installed by my, by my guys. Us. And if we don't like it, I don't care what, 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 if it's going to be profitable. Uh, I can tell you, if we don't like it, it's going to be a headache. Right. And Agreed. we don't want it. We, we've learned. Yeah. It, 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 you know, endorse great products, sell great products. Um, and the other guys, it, 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 we just don't mention. Right. That's, it's, you know, that's, I think that's a fair way of doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, I, you know, like I said, there's enough people online blasting people every day about breathing wrong or whatever else they do, you know, or, or their products, this or that or the other. I mean, some people deserve it. Some people don't. Most people well, don't. I've ordered stuff online too, you know, and, and I'm the king of it. I, I, I'm the I'm the Facebook junkie. I'm on, I'm on Facebook, and I see some cool new tool. I order, I click, and buy it, and it gets here three weeks later. And I can't tell you how disappointed I am. I just take it over, look at it, and dump it in the trash. I'm and, and I, I really, I honestly think that that we are finally living in a post Amazon Prime world and post Timu world in the motorcycle industry, where people have bought enough junk online. Now they want quality. And now they want quality. And they also, which is great about having 
a brick and mortar store. And what's great about what we do on the V2 and Visionary Tour, taking all these people around and putting up our performance row is you could come out or you can come here, you can touch and feel it and talk to somebody that knows about it, then make an informed decision. Instead of buying something, oh, this thing sucks, and maybe not getting it back in that window at a time, and it's still sitting on your shelf. <laughs> By the time you get to it, it's over. You threw the money away, right. and money's hard to come by. Right. It, it's, it's, it's expensive nowadays. Yep. So tell me a little bit about the V2 and Visionary, because you do something that's really cool that I think a lot of our listeners really want to know. Yeah, I mean, what we did is once, you know, I, I was the editor of Street Chopper, Baggers, and Hot Bike Magazine for years. I became the editorial director, then the brand director, and then magazines took a, a big dump. dump. Yeah. yeah, they died, and, and I, you know, I was kind of fodder in that. Um, so what I ended up doing is you know, taking a little time off. My wife at the time was a nurse. She's like, take, take six weeks off, turn it into eight weeks, figure out what you want to do with your life. You know, Typical, any magazine editor that lost a job, every company was like, oh, marketing guy, oh, marketing yeah. guy. And I didn't want to do that. I honestly didn't, even though I did a bunch of marketing before I was an editor, just didn't feel good for me. And then I worked with a guy named Dave Rowe at Hot Bike, one of the greatest guys ever. Uh, he was a publisher there. He quit a little early. He called me on the phone. Uh -huh. We got together, said, we're going to come out with our own brand, kind of an online magazine, kind of something else, because the online magazine, as soon as somebody says that, you're like, okay. Yeah. So we wanted it to be a little bit more. Literally, the name came to me in a dream at 3 a.m. one day. We were going to call it some lame name that probably wouldn't have did anything good. But it, yeah. And so V2 and Visionary came to me in a dream, picked up the phone, called Dave Rowe, talked to my wife. We all agreed. I got it. Got it. Got it. Home run. Robert Martin, who designed Hot Bike Magazine for years, he was my right hand, mine design department, did the logo. I wanted something really simple and not flames and exhausts yeah. and that stuff. Something that it would stand out from all that stuff. Not orange and black, not, not this or not that. Not just another Me Too. Right. And, and, you know, we could have called it something a lot different and got a lot more fans and followers first. You know, it could have been really Harley forward, but we decided we were going to call it V-Twin Visionary and keep it for guys in the know, guys and girls in the know. And that's kind of how it happened, you know? And, and it's snowballed since then. We got a road show. Okay, I mean, you, come on, man. Shows, you were traveling almost every single day all year round. Yeah. You, you are everywhere. La um, and for a couple of years, Maggie and I just lived in the trailer. Yeah. And we circled the country. Um, last year, we moved to Tennessee built a house and a shop and then we ended up hiring a couple drivers a couple veteran guys take, your rigs around. take the rigs yeah. around and then and we take the sprinter van that we got this year with rockford fosgate and a couple other brands and do dealer visits i find it really core cool to like come into a shop like yours that i've never been into or a dealership and just walk around and get the vibe and talk to people we hand them a cool little goodie bag with stickers yeah. and crap yeah. and other stuff and hi bye and then you well, know it's, it's interesting you get to see a lot of a, a, lot oh, yeah. of, a lot of places. So, okay, I got to ask you a question then. You have been in probably every single motorcycle dealer, Harley dealer uh, in the whole country. How does this compare? You've been in here. You this, know this, this place. How does lifestyle sell? <laughs> tell I want I want there to are you. There are none that meet this, and I honestly say that. I mean, anybody that's never been to Lifestyles, Anytime you come to SoCal, anytime you, you take your family to Disneyland or Knott's Berry Farm or any of that stuff, come to the Anaheim Convention Center, make your way here, man. Uh, they'll tell you where to get real good Mexican food. They'll tell you. <laughs> you can see all the parts that you've only seen on the internet in one place. You can get decked out in riding clothes for all seasons. I mean, this, this is the place, man. And, and I think, you know, there, a lot of people have tried and failed, you know. There's, there's only a couple dealerships that rival the design and the coolness but they just fall short because they don't have the aftermarket stuff they can't they, dealers can't and that's that's where we come in because you're right lifestyle cycles has everything uh, not everything high quality the parts you want the parts that are going to yep. work on your bike the parts that you can't find anywhere else uh something else I, that's that i think is really cool with our niche we find small niche manufacturers yeah. that can't be nationwide and we bring them nationwide yeah. because we're able to offer, you know, again, going back to what we've done for all these years, try these parts. I'm making something really cool. And of all those ones that are always maybe the, some that are not so cool, we find the ones that are super cool. Right. Always. And, 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 and that's our niche, I think. And I think we find those guys that make things that you look and go, wow, this is really, really cool. And 
we want the world to know about it. Which I think is really cool because you've always been, you know, I know you've always done mail order the hard way. And then now you have this mega website that has everything on it that you've touched that is usually in stock. I'm 99.9% .9 in stock here at the store. Yes. You know, which is, you know, you warehouse a lot of stuff. A lot of people drop ship everything. You know, most people, you know, drop ship everything. I think that with that, you, you, you're you one-upping a lot of the, the bigger brands of online retailers right now. And I can see that in real time, you know. And we have the guys to, to back it up. If you have a problem, I'll tell you what, if somebody buys something from someone else and has a problem, still call me. My guys, well, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you all that right now, the, I, and I mean this. That's a if lot. If you have a problem, you can still call Lifestyle Cycles. My tech guys are going to walk you through the install. They're going to help you out with the manufacturer. We take it a step farther, and you know what? I'm, and here's why I did that, Jeff, because I'm going to earn their business. It's true. They are going to go, wait a minute. These guys helped me so much, uh, I'm, I can't go anywhere else. I mean, you guys got nothing to lose. You guys are industry leaders. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think if you extend that helping hand to people, when a lot of people, you know, they don't have call centers, you're talking to one dude that's loading boxes by himself that's never going to answer the phone, you know, or a big company, you know, that owns a bunch of different retail outlets and, and, and online outlets, like that's just, you're just part of the, part of the machine, you know, here, you're, they, you they, y'all care. And a, I, a, I hate, yeah. hate saying that in that way, well, but it's legit. A couple of nights ago, it was about 10 o'clock and we're, we're Pacific time, so California. And I got, we're, we're all on an automated system. So everyone gets these messages. So it's 10 o'clock and I get a message. Someone's having a problem installing a Soundstream stereo. Right. And so I jump up, my wife thinks I'm nuts. I get on the computer, I start answering him. And I look and I'm going, okay, he didn't buy it from me. So I still walked him through. Now it's one o'clock, because he's on the East Coast. Right. So this guy's probably been in his garage all night long. He's tired, he's frustrated. Right. And you know what, 15 minutes of my time, he was dialed in, well, the stereo's working. And I gotta tell you what, I know he will come buy, buy his next product for me. Right, I know. all the way across the coast. Yeah. All the way across the country. Yeah. And I mean, the bottom line is, it's that guy probably works 10 hours a day and has a family and can only get to his bike at, 10 to 1 p.m. or 10 to 1 a.m. You know, and having and he, somebody that he can, can that he could just get talk to, talk to and, and make it all better is is and that's he monumental. Had a ride Saturday, right? And because this just last Friday, he probably had a ride on Saturday morning, and he's anxious and his bike's apart, it's not working. And you know what? Uh, he calls us and we save the day for him. I love that man. Yeah, so that's what's cool. Right. So Jeff. Do you, have any, do you have any super exciting projects that you're working on now? Something, what, what's your favorite project right now? I've, I've got two. You know, of course, everybody's super hot and horny over the CVOST, so I'm working on one of those. Wow. It, you know, you can check out v2envisionary.com on that, and it's got a lot of parts that, that y'all sell on it. Um, but the big one I'm doing is I'm going to do a sub 500 pound carbureted M8 soft tail, which will have you know, everybody's lightweight stuff on it, some carbon fiber wheels, and you know, hopefully a carbon fiber tank and, and a bunch of other stuff. That's, so. well, just getting rid of the fuel injection. Yeah. That's got what, 50, 60 pounds? Yeah, Easy. even more, yeah. E oh man. All the wiring and two computers and all that stuff and getting rid of that swing arm. I'll put a speed dealer swing arm on it and a couple other things. Carbon so. fiber wheels. Will carbon wheels, of course. Mass weight off of it. Seven eighths bars yeah. with moto stuff, you know, everything wow. smaller and smaller, you know, carbon fenders. So what's the vision? What style, what's this gonna look like? It's gonna be probably the most stripped down soft tail. Like it's gonna look, pretty racy like like a lot of y'all's uh race bikes that you have okay. out on the track so it'll it'll do that like i'm even maybe be devising a way to put a uh to put a, a super small sportster tank on it it's gonna yeah. look weird but i mean we're gonna weigh everything before and after and make it oh, legit yeah. so it'll be it'll be a cool build you know this something completely different and big motor super performance like you know i'm trying to make it at the end all be all of performance stuff for this and next year so, so basically you want to be the biggest badass out there on an m8 soft tail you're just going to go, go t t just rip yeah. it up on it yeah no no uh, no limitations for me right on power <laughs> all power <laughs> right that well, is really man, cool. I gotta tell you what i am so excited to have you be part of our family man it's uh, it's just super cool, cool. I mean, yeah. just to be, I don't know what you want to call me, an influencer, a guy, a person, you know, whatever. You know, you know me, guy, I'm, I'm, I'm just a guy. Yeah. Um, just to be a part of this, man, and to see y'all go worldwide with this, 
that, that, that makes me happy. Because to see this little shop that's done so much and get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger every year for 20 something years, now everybody gets a piece of you. And it's super cool, man. And, I, and to be involved in that and have people have me, you know, in the, in the back of their mind when they think about lifestyles, that's, that's awesome for me. Well, man, again, thank you. I, I'm so glad you stopped by today. It's an honor to have, oh, man. seriously, the legendary Jeff Holt in our <laughs> building again. I blush. Man, it, it, it's just <laughs> exciting. So everybody, thanks for watching this today. Well, wait, don't go anywhere until you like and subscribe to make sure you get notified every time we post our how-to videos, our product reviews, and all of our amazing interviews with your favorite racers and industry icons. I'll see you guys next time.